Sweet. Okay, I guess it's my turn now. I'm going to talk about knots. Um, so I'm just here in my living room, and I'm going to talk about kind of the, the kind of key knots that I find that I end up using a lot for uh, ski mountaineering and rock climb mountaineering. Basically, you, you only need to know a few knots. <laughs> So I wanted to talk about this before we go into what Jeff's going to chat about, which is crevasse rescue. Um, just to have some fundamental knot base, so when we get into more technical stuff, it makes sense. And so I'll go through each knot, and then if you have any questions, just ask after each knot. Um, and then similarly, if there's anything that you would like to learn, maybe I know how to tie that knot, and we can, we can try it online here. So the first one is the most useful knot the old figure eight. And so the figure eight is generally used just for tying in to your harness or to tie a fixed end at the end of the rope where you can clip that into the anchor. Um, it, it is probably the most common used knot. So the figure eight, I always like to teach it like I'm teaching children, is to make a snowman head and then you wrap the scarf around the snowman and you poke them in the eye. And then what you're left with is a figure, a, a, a knot that looks like an eight. You can see one common mistake that people will have is they won't wrap the scarf all the way around the neck. They'll only go halfway around the neck and you'll end up with an overhand knot. So an overhand knot's like your, you know, your granny knot. You don't know knots, tie lots kind of thing. So you have the difference there, overhand, Figure eight, wrapping all the way around and through the eye. Cool? Okay. Next is the figure eight follow through. So if you're tying into your harness, you can basically do the same thing, tie your figure eight, and then you're going to retrace that knot. So I find the biggest thing for me is to measure how much tail you're going to need. So I'll grab the end of the rope and then I'll measure to my opposite shoulder, okay? And then I'll drop the end of the rope, and then that right-hand side there will create the new snowman head. So I've got all that extra tail, and then I'll do my standard figure eight. And this will leave me enough tail to go through my harness and then retrace the knot. So I just have a ski mounting harness on right now, so I don't have the tr traditional um, two tie-in points. But you can imagine I'm gonna go through the two tie-in points and I'm gonna start to retrace the figure eight knot. So the big trick here to make your knot perfect every time is to not start on the obvious side here. You see how there's like a big hole there? You don't wanna start there. You actually wanna push the rope to the side to create a little bit of space and then you're gonna to start to retrace the knot on that. So if you do that every time, your knot's gonna be a lot cleaner once you finish it. And then basically here, all I'm gonna do is gonna take the end of my rope and retrace every single point of my knot. Here, I don't have to, I can go through all the, open holes on my knot, that's fine. It's just that first one that you have to go through the hard side. And then up through the end, almost lost you. And then what I'm left with is, again, my figure eight, with every single point is doubled. So here I'm gonna double check to make sure my knot is correct. And I'm just gonna count every single point and make sure that they're double. If any part of the knot doesn't have a partner, doesn't have it, it's not doubled up, then you made a mistake with the knot. So two, four, six, eight, ten, 10. And then I have ample tail here. Ideally, I'm gonna end up with just a fist and a thumb. The reason I have so much here is because my um, tie-in points are a little bit different than they would on a normal climbing harness. Cool, so that's the figure eight. Any, any questions about the figure eight? No, such an easy one, okay. The next is just to figure it out on a bite. So you can do that same, same process. And instead of doing it on a singular rope, I'm gonna do a doubled figure eight. So if I wanted to clip into an anchor to fix uh, a line, maybe I was gonna do a rappel or I was gonna climb up a rope, something like that. I'm gonna create a closed loop on the end of the rope. So I'm just gonna again, make that 
a wasp of tail, and I'm gonna tie that figure in the same manner, but everything's gonna be doubled up. And now I have that closed loop to clip into my anchor. Again, ample tail. Okay, my, the next one we're gonna talk about is the overhand. So the overhand, again, that's like the one that you've learned from a kid. It's basically just the granny knot. This is the, what you do when you, before you tie your, your shoelace, right? You do the simple knot and then you do the, the bunny ears. So this is an easy one, but this in itself on a single strand doesn't do you too much. You can retrace it, but it's not um, as useful as a figure eight would be. It's because it's really hard to untie. So the one reason that you might be using an overhand would be, say, if you're clipping into a rope on glacier travel, it's a nice small knot to tie as a doubled up. So here I'm gonna imagine I'm client tip and clip, clipping into the middle of a rope. It's gonna double my rope up. I'm gonna tie my little overhand knot. And now I can clip into this, right? You can see it's just a lot smaller than a figure eight would be. The one disadvantage here though is it's gonna be a lot harder to untie if it is, if it is loaded. So that's an easy one. Okay, so those are the kind of the two common um, kind of clip-in knots. The next is a uh, fisherman's knot. So if I had to join two different ropes together, so let's say I was, you know, I had to go down a, a big rappel on, and I was gonna tie two single ropes together to create a lot of length. Um, one of the easiest ways to tie two ropes together is with a single or double fisherman's knot. You know, they're both fine, a single or a double, either of them really is, is good. For me personally, I like to just go for the double. Make, and it feels better, honestly, and that's the biggest thing. So here I'm gonna have the ropes going in opposite direction. And I'm basically gonna tie that same overhang, which we just did, around the opposite rope, right? So you can see there's my overhand, it's going around the other rope. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side and tie the overhand. And when I pull them together, the two overhand knots basically bite on each other. And that's what joins the two ropes together. Now, so this is a single fisherman's knot, right? Because I only did one wrap. And the big thing here to make sure that it's correct is that the knot is symmetrical. As you can see on this side, I have the knot. And then on the other side, it's smooth. Right, so that's how it, I know that I've done that correctly. So here I'll do the double fisherman's, basically same thing. Instead of just doing one wrap and tying my overhand, I'm gonna do a double wrap, hence the name. And I'm basically wrapping my way up the rope and then back through. So I've done an overhand knot, but I just added one extra little wrap. Make sure everything is really nicely set. And again, I can check my knot to make sure that both sides are the same, right? So here I have my X's and the other side, it's smooth. So there is the double fisherman's knot. Again, with anything, make sure you have enough tail. You know, what, that's one thing that knots, depending on the type of knot, they can unroll themselves a little bit. So just make sure you have ample tail. I always find to say it, no matter what my knot is, I'm gonna to aim to have that fist in the thumb just like I would with my figure eight knot. Alrighty. Um, next is the prussic knot. So if you're doing crevasse rescue and you need to create a bite or a, some sort of rope grab to haul someone out of the line, or you're doing a rappel and you need like that extra support to hold the rope in case for whatever reason that your hands were knocked free and you weren't able to hold on to the rope anymore. A prusik will slide on the rope and when it gets loaded it will grab tight. So a prusik, generally speaking, we're gonna use a prusik cord that is two mils smaller than the diameter of the rope that you're using. So in this case, this is the nine mil rope. And so I wanna use a seven mil or smaller prusik cord. So the prusik, if I'm tying on a single strand, I can do a two wrap prusik. If I'm tying it onto two strands, 
I can do a, sorry, I got that backwards. If I'm tying it on a single strand, I'm gonna have a three wrap prosthetic because I need that extra bite because it's grabbing onto a smaller surface. If I'm tying on to a double strand, I can get away with a double wrap. So I'll start with the three wrap on the single strand. So I'm gonna take my prosthetic cord, fold it in half, and I'm basically going to do a, what you would call a girth hitch. So I'm gonna pass the ends of the rope through the loop that I've created. And I basically just created a little wrap around my climbing rope. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I've done enough wraps depending on how many um, cords of rope I'm tying around. So here, I'm gonna do another wrap, again, working my way into the middle. So there's my double wrap prusik. And then here to do my triple, I'm just gonna add one more loop. And again, I find the trick for me is I just tie it really tight and I just kind of use my fingers to open up and then pass the ends of the rope through. And can set that in place. And again, here, I'm gonna make sure that everything's tied correctly. Everything's really clean. You can see my Prusik is work, it's all clean, nothing's twisted, and it's working from the outside to the inside here. So now I can basically secure this to my anchor if I'm doing crevasse rescue, or I can secure it to my harness if I need to back up for my rappel. So again, I'm tying on the double fish, the single fisherman's on double strand, same process, but I'm using two ropes. I'm gonna create my bite, and then I'm just gonna add one more loop. And I have my simple double fisherman's knot, sorry, double prosthetic knot. Okay. The next really useful knot in rock climbing and also crevasse rescue is a clove hitch. So for a clove hitch, you're gonna need a carabiner. Now, the clove hitch is a knot that is adjustable. So if I wanna clip myself into the anchor, I can use the clove hitch. And then, oh, I need to get a little bit more slack. I can adjust that knot without untying myself. So in a rock climbing context, it's really useful when I get to the top of the pitch, clove hitch myself into the anchor using my climbing rope. And, oh, maybe I need to go a little further down to give myself some, give my partner beta or take a photo. I can adjust it without taking myself off the anchor so I can stay secure the entire time. So take your knot, cross your hands, and then you're gonna pull your hands apart like you're doing some sort of karate move. It kind of helps as you go, ha! Pretend like you're a karate star. And then you can see here, I've created these two loops that are going in opposing direction. And I'm basically gonna take the two ends of rope that are dropping down towards my feet and I'm gonna place them into the middle. So you can see I have one loop going that direction and then one loop going the other direction. I'm gonna place those two free ends into the middle and then clip the whole knot together. And there is my clove edge. So if I want to adjust it, all I have to do is pull one strand through, pull the other, and you can see I can adjust the length of that knot without having it completely unclipped. That's a fun one. Uh, the next is a munter hitch. So a munter hitch isn't that we're kind of getting to the end of what is really commonly used. A munter hitch is great if maybe you forgot your belay device and you need to belay someone. Um, in that the munter hitch is a good improvised belay device or also an improvised rappelling device. Um, it doesn't work great, it tangles the rope up, so I do try and avoid using the munter hitch, but it's a really good trick to have in your sleeve, right? If you, I'm sure if you've been rock climbing, the chances of you dropping that belay device is, is quite high, we could be fumbling between pitches. So it's really important that you know how to have a backup belay or backup rappel. So I learned for me the easiest thing is, again, I'm gonna take my rope, in front of my face, and I'm basically just gonna create one loop. And then there I've created the end that's going down my feet, and I'm basically gonna close it with another half loop. So I'm gonna roll 90 degree angle, roll it towards me, and then roll the other end going up. And so I have 
one loop and then I have another half loop. And I'm going to clip both those strands with my beaner. And now I have a mud hitch where I can feed the rope out. I'll clip this into my harness here. So here I can feed the rope out. And if someone were to fall, I'm holding the rope in a parallel position that's gonna break. And same thing if maybe I wanna rappel, I can just lower myself down. Again, the problem here is it really tangles the rope. So again, we try and avoid using these as best as possible. Um, the last knot that I wanna show is kind of my favorite one. It's uh, more of a, a, a guiding context. So, you know, if I'm alpine guiding, I'll often use the muncher itch for really quick little belays where I don't want to bother getting my whole, you know, guide ATC set up. I just want to do something really quick. And also I want to go from a belay to securing my client. Um, I'm going to belay with the muncher hitch. And so I'm belaying up. Great. And then I'm going to I'll do it this way for you. So I'm belaying my client up, and then I want to switch to a clove hitch. A nice little trick is you take the brake strand, so the brake strand is the one that's not enclosed in the loop there. I'm going to grab it with a thumbs down motion, and I'm going to bring a loop up, clip it through the beaner, and then create one more other loop. And then when I pull the whole thing apart, it tra transfers into a clove hitch. It's definitely something you gotta practice because if you get it wrong, you just took your partner off the leg. So again, the big trick here is that free strand needs to be on the open gate side, grabbing thumbs down to create a loop, and then adding one more. And then as you pull, it turns all the way to the clove hitch. That is it. Those are my those are my those are my top knots. So does anyone have any questions? You can raise your hand. So many questions. <laughs> Brian. Hey Brian. Can you show the Munter mule? Oh yeah. Did you say the Munter mule? Yeah. But yeah, tying tying off the Munter edge. Yeah. So let me get my little somehow to hold my here. Here I'll I'll make my anchor my the necklace here. Okay, so let's say that this is my my load strand. So I'm going to take this is this will be my brake strand, and I'm going to do a half hitch, and then I'm going to put a bite through the loop that I just created. Tighten that up. And then the big thing here is I'm trapping that loop that I've created. So if I do it the other way and I put a loop through it, it's, it's not gonna tight down, tighten down on itself. So here, what I like to just do is roll it towards myself, put the bite through, tighten that up. And then in this case with my climbing rope, I'm just gonna tie another overhand knot just to double check. Cause even if I messed up that first part, that overhand knot is gonna probably gonna keep us keep keep us safe anyway. Um, if you're using a prosthetic and you have just a small amount of um, tail, you can instead of doing the overhand, you can just put the free end of the tail through. Cool. Any other questions?